Wesley Sneijder never quite repeated the levels that he reached in 2010 in the years since but the Dutchman, now playing in Qatar, proved that he's very much still got it with a wonderful free-kick goal. Once upon a time Wesley Sneijder was the best footballer in the world. It didn't last too long, and it obviously didn't in the Ballon d'Or because his name isn't Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi, but there's little doubt. The Dutchman was the best player in Jose Mourinho's Inter Milan side that won an infamous treble, beating Pep Guardiola's Barcelona on the way to the Champions League final, before beating Bayern Munich in said final. Sneijder back when he was the world's best player. Image, pa images. After that Sneijder helped Netherlands to the World Cup final that they lost. After that period, though the former Ajax midfielder never quite lived up to those standards. Despite being a Manchester United player throughout his whole career he never actually played for the Red Devils and now he's playing in Qatar for Al Garafa, but that's not stopping him scoring a trademark worldie. The transfers that somehow never happened despite the rumors, so Manchester United finally bought Victor Lindelof on Saturday night, that's not bad considering they've only been linked with him since December. The Red Devils have had difficulty getting certain deals done, but so have a lot of teams. Every summer there are columns and web pages full of transfer rumors, not least on this website, about who will be going to which team for how many millions of pounds. Of course, only so many of those transfers will ever happen, and there's only so many times that we'll ever take Gareth Bale moving to Manchester United seriously before we've written it off. The exception that proves the rule. Image, pa, there are some rumors that stop being in the gossip column and move over to the Dundee end of the spectrum only for the deal to never materialize. All that smoke and still no fire. Oh, and the weekend, Manchester United bucked a huge trend by actually signing a player from Benfica for once. The Red Devils feature quite heavily on this list of deals that never happened. How much did United make from the Zena deal? Image, part of Benfica centre back linked with Manchester United for months on end. Sounds familiar. The only difference was the Gare was linked with a move to Old Trafford for several seasons. Finally, in June 2014, he moved to Zenit St. Petersburg, but considering Portuguese press had reported several times his move to United was a done deal, fans of the club must have been wondering why they let him go. Gerard was the central midfielder who embodied Liverpool in the Premier League era, and just like them, the one thing that will forever haunt him is the missed opportunity to win the league. But Gerard could have done it with Liverpool if the death threats hadn't put him off going. What might have been. Eventually, Ibra ended up in the Premier League with Manchester United, aged 35, but it could have been a much earlier move for the Swede. Once upon a time Arsene Wenger was interested in signing the striker, but asked him to come for a trial. Oh, of course we all know that Slayton doesn't do auditions. Imagine if he'd ended up in Blackburn instead of Blackburn. Image, pa, it could have been so different for the Polish striker. NOW a Champions League winner he could have just been relegated from the championship. In 2010 the then Lech Poznan forward nearly signed for Blackburn Rovers, but the dust cloud caused by an Icelandic volcano halted his flight and his move to Lancashire. If Gary's never-ending, a never-happening move to Old Trafford seemed like a slog then the Wesley Sneijder rumors were like a bad guy halfway through a James Bond film, they simply wouldn't die. Eventually the Dutch midfielder stopped playing well, and everyone forgot the whole thing as he went to Turkey.
another former Inter midfielder, but the difference with Guarin was there was no specific club for him to move to. For two summer windows and the January window in between, Guarin was pimped out everywhere in the papers. On a near daily basis Guarin's value changed as he was constantly linked with some sort of swap deal. He was never really going to be a gunner was he. Image, pa these two can get bundled together because it just seemed that Arsenal were so desperate to spend big money on a big name striker that the players were almost interchangeable. Of course neither of these two ever came close to moving to the Emirates, but plenty thought they would. Rafa Benitez had Zabi Alonso at his disposal, but for some reason he really really wanted to sign Gareth Barry. Alonso decided that he felt the manager didn't want him so decided to head to Real Madrid. Barry never turned up at Anfield and eventually turned up at Manchester City. Not Rafa's finest hour, fact. One of the most complicated transfer stories in history in the middle of one of football's best rivalries. Image, pa going back a little in history, and nothing really to do with column inches, but Di Stefano nearly signed for Barcelona and not Real Madrid, and it would have changed the course of history. This transfer was so weird that at one point it was suggested the two clubs shared him with Di Stefano playing alternate seasons for the rivals, imagine. Might this be the summer that William Carvalho finally moves from sporting? The Portuguese midfielder seems to have been linked with every club outside of his native country. Yet to find a new club Manchester City and Newcastle United are in the hunt this summer, allegedly. In 2013 Peter Autumn Wingy was done with West Brom in his mind. QPR looked set to sign the winger, so he drove down from the Hawthorns to sign for Harry Redknapp only Harry hadn't done a deal with the player's current club. Autumn Wingy was spotted by Sky Sports in his car waiting for a deal that never happened. Let's all have a disco. Silva, Navas, Isco. Believe it or not, parts of the Manchester City faithful had a song for Isco when the Malaga youngster was linked with a the move there, 